In this video, we will delve into the fascinating process that transforms raw materials into live ammunition. Join me as we explore the intricate world of producing millions of rounds of ammunition annually. We'll also uncover the remarkable complexity of this essential product, known for its crucial role in modern warfare and its ever-evolving technological innovations. The ammunition manufacturing process comprises several individual elements that are produced separately before being assembled to form the end product. The initial phase involves crafting the cartridge case, which serves as the outer casing of an ammunition round. The process begins with the preparation of brass, the most commonly used raw material for creating cartridge cases. While this alloy is commonly preferred for its combination of strength, durability and flexibility in crafting ammunition casings, aluminum, steel, nickel plating or even plastic are also frequently employed, particularly in specific shotgun shells and non-lethal projectiles. To acquire its distinctive shape, brass initially undergoes a stretching press to elongate its cup to the desired cartridge length. Following the completion of this stage, the heading and stamping operation is carried out during which the primer pocket is shaped, a topic we will delve into later. As you're likely aware, when a firearm is discharged, the cartridge case separates from the projectile. This is why the subsequent step, known as extractor rim cutting, holds significant importance. Through a swift and precise lathe cut, the extractor rim of the cartridge case is shaped, ensuring a smooth ejection process following the shot. The stretching and shaping processes create stress in the brass, which can result in cartridge cases cracking or deforming. Hence, the following stage, referred to as annealing, entails heating the brass to a controlled temperature and subsequently cooling it gradually to ensure both quality and durability. We've already achieved a flawless tube, but there's one more step left, to shape the end of the cartridge case where the opening for the bullet resides. This is accomplished using a lathe to give the cartridge neck the right shape and a die to trim it to the correct length and size. After a final washing stage in circular machines, we now have gleaming cartridge cases ready for use. However, a cartridge case is not yet ammunition, it's just the starting point. Now let's focus on the bullets. Their production process, entirely distinct from the previous one, begins with lead ingots being placed into a furnace. Inside the furnace, this metal slowly melts, transforming into a solid cylinder measuring approximately 3 inches in diameter. The selection of lead as the raw material is deliberate. Its weight plays a key role in ensuring bullets fly accurately and penetrate targets effectively. Additionally, lead is highly malleable, allowing it to take on various shapes and it expands upon impact, making it valuable for hunting or self-defense purposes. When the lead cylinder emerges from the furnace, it retains its elevated temperature. And it's during this stage that the extrusion process occurs. This process entails subjecting the cylinder to a pressure of around 200 tons applied by a hydraulic piston. This immense pressure causes it to extrude into wires, which are then coiled to supply the cutting machines. These machines are responsible for the final step in core formation, cutting the wire into segments of the appropriate size for the bullet. Nevertheless, a bullet consists of more than just its core. It also includes another essential component known as the jacket. While the core primarily influences the bullet's weight and penetration, the jacket serves as the outer layer that enhances its shape, strength and, in certain instances, its expansion upon impact with a target. To bring these two parts together, the initial step is to take the bullet jackets, usually cylindrical tubes made of copper or a rust material. A machine is then tasked with inserting the lead core into the open end of these tubes and subsequently securing it using various forms of force and pressure. However, bullet integrity is of paramount importance. Therefore, the bullet is flipped so that the open end of the jacket faces upward, allowing for further shaping and fitting through the use of presses and stamping processes until the required specifications are achieved. In some cases, the jacket's end may even undergo threading or stamping to provide a textured surface, which can be advantageous for controlled expansion upon striking a target. At the conclusion of this stage, we have fully assembled bullets with the core inside and the jacket surrounding it, ready for use in ammunition cartridges. As you've witnessed, several cartridge components are now prepared for the final assembly. To comprehend the significance of these components and the remaining stages, it's an opportune moment to explore how a shot functions. After loading a cartridge into the firearm's chamber or barrel and pulling the trigger, the firing pin is released, striking the cartridge's primer, generating a spark that ignites the gunpowder. The combustion of this combustible material creates high gas pressure within the cartridge case, propelling the bullet at high speed through the firearm's barrel. The bullet exits the barrel toward its target while the empty cartridge case is ejected from the firearm. 
As we resume the production process, the cartridge cases and bullets are ready, but the primers are yet to be manufactured. The process begins by loading small priming cups into trays with the assistance of gentle vibrations, ensuring their precise placement on a metal plate filled with holes. At the same time, in another part of the factory specially equipped with anti-static precautions, an operator handles the priming compound loading. Why is this done in a dedicated section? Because static electricity can accumulate in the human body during specific tasks and discharge as sparks, which poses a substantial danger when working with flammable or static sensors sensitive materials like the priming compound. To load the compound, the operator applies it to a plate with holes, identical in size to the previous one, specially designed for precise measurement of the right amount of compound before it's introduced into the priming cups. Afterward, the operator flips the plate to evenly and consistently press the compound into the priming cups. Finally, a machine takes over to ensure a secure bond between the priming compound and the initial cups. However, there's more to be done as the anvils, which serve as the internal structure of the primers, still need to be incorporated. These anvils are placed with precision on a plate identical to the previous two. Once ready, they are joined with the priming cups, which already contain the priming compound, resulting in the completed primers. After all the diligent work, finally, each of the components will converge in the last stage, assembling the cartridges. Initially, the cartridge cases are pierced to create a hole where the primer will be subsequently inserted with precise pressure to ensure the primer's stability. The next step involves applying a small quantity of transparent sealant, effectively safeguarding and hermetically sealing the primer securely within the cartridge case before continuing their journey. The cartridge cases with primers pass under an ultraviolet light, given that the applied sealant is transparent, allowing to inspect and identify any imperfections. The individual in charge of visual inspection ensures that only high-quality ammunition cartridges receive approval to advance in the process and feed into the final machine in the sequence. The high-speed loader. Through a highly automated process, the cartridges are fed from containers into seven consecutive turrets while an operator handles the loading of gunpowder into a hopper that supplies this compound to the cartridges. The initial turret takes on the task of expanding and shaping the mouth of each ammunition cartridge case, where gunpowder is dispensed through glass funnels. After the gunpowder is dispensed and a verification is performed to ensure the correct quantity, the bullet is inserted into each cartridge case at the fourth turret before it is seated in its final position, which occurs at the fifth turret. The sixth turret handles the crimping process, ensuring a secure fit for the bullet within the cartridge case. Finally, the seventh stage involves the cartridge's final inspection. An operator carefully examines each one, identifying any defects and allowing the flawless ones to continue. The cartridges are now prepared and ready for use. The cartridges that have successfully passed through these stages are automatically directed to a packaging machine capable of aligning and placing 10 cartridges at a time into the familiar plastic cases used for transportation. Before shipping, a sample of the ammunition undergoes thorough testing to ensure consistency in terms of pressure, velocity, accuracy, and performance, providing assurance of quality to customers. If all goes well, the boxes move to the packaging area and are then ready for direct shipment. From selecting stainless steel materials to the intricate craftsmanship in forming these essential components, this captivating journey unveils the remarkable process behind every cartridge's creation. Please share with us which part of the cartridge manufacturing process has sparked your curiosity the most, and feel free to suggest other aspects you'd like us to explore in our upcoming videos. If you found this content engaging, we invite you to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to stay informed about our future videos. We appreciate your company on this fascinating journey.